Hi class, I'm Dr. Scott Adamson, and we're gonna continue on our journey of integration techniques. And this first video, which will be part of a series, is just to motivate you to be aware that we need more integration techniques to do what we do. And to do that, I'd like you to consider the two integrals that you see here on the board. The one on the left has embedded in it the algebraic structure that allows us to integrate this one the way you've been integrating things in the past. While this one, with just the subtle change in the numerator from x to one, and we'll talk about this, kind of ruins the whole structure. So we'll need another technique. But let's just uh, study those structures here for a minute. In this case, if I rewrite this, you'll see it more clearly. Algebraically speaking, that numerator of x, instead of divided by the square root, can be multiplied by that binomial to the negative one-half power. Just let me remind you of the algebra there. A square root is equivalent to writing as a one-half power, and because it's in the denominator, we make that a negative one-half power, and so this and this are algebraically the same thing. Now, the reason I would write it that way is to help you see the structure even more clearly. The structure is this. This binomial, if you imagine the chain rule, this binomial has a derivative that involves just x. And so, remember, this whole idea of integration is trying to construct, create an antiderivative. Create a function whose derivative is this thing that we see here. So, as you look at this structurally speaking, I want you to see it as a, a result of a chain rule. Here's what I mean. This binomial, if the derivative was taken to bring the exponent to negative one-half, the function here had to have an exponent of positive one-half. Remember, when we take a derivative, we decrease the power by one. One-half minus one is negative a-half. So when we do the antiderivative, we're going to increase the power by one. Let me just pause there for a minute. Remember, we're in this construction process, so I'm not done yet, but we're thinking about the structure of this thing. If I was to take the derivative of this, the one-half would come out front, I would decrease the power by one, thus the negative one-half. I would leave the binomial alone, thus leaving the binomial alone. But we're not done. There's a couple things we have to consider. First of all, the one half that would have come out front in the derivative process, notice that there is no coefficient of one half. There is no factor of one half in my integrand up here. And so I have to think about if the one half came out front in the differentiation process, a factor of two must have been there to eliminate that one half. Secondly, by the chain rule, after the one half comes out front and gets decreased by one, the chain rule would, would require that I take the derivative of this binomial. And the derivative of this binomial would be negative two x. Ah, that's where that x came from. It's at least partially, I know it's negative two x, but it's at least partially the derivative of that binomial by the chain rule. But the derivative would be negative two x. Notice the factor or the coefficient of negative two is not there. And so we have to think about what must have been here to eliminate that factor of negative two? Well, a negative one half. Don't forget your constant of integration plus C. And let's just clean this up a little bit. So negative one half times two would be just negative one. One minus X squared to the one half plus C. So we get this beautiful result. Let's check it and see if it makes sense to us now. Remember, this is the function whose derivative is this here. So let's just do a little mental check here. The one half comes out front, gets decreased by one, leave that binomial alone. That's why we have that binomial to the negative one half. Now remember, the one half came out front. Chain rule, the derivative of the stuff would be negative two x. Notice it's just a positive one X here. Now, remember the one half that came out front? Now remember the two that came out front? That's why it's just a coefficient of one. 
but it was a negative two, so that negative is going to counteract that to make it a positive one. And so, yes, this antiderivative makes sense. Now, if you like, you don't have to, but if you like, you can return it to the square root notation. S S O. Now, that has the structure that we like. Now, in this case, the structure doesn't exist because remember over here, the derivative of this binomial by the chain rule was a negative 2x, and we had that factor of x. There's no factor of x. So the structure that we saw here doesn't exist here, which means we need another technique. So we'll pursue that technique in the next video. So thanks for joining us. Do click on that next video so you can see how we're going to tackle this integral. And also, please click on the Advantage logo to subscribe to this channel. I'll see you in the next video.